Um, well, thank you for doing this and getting this, this all is a group together. Effort. Yeah, yes. this all together. So, um, but I'm Kelly Lemon, and um, I do a lot in Richmond, but I am more known for being social and being seen. Um, and so I'm, I always have to be ready to go, as people say. Um, back in 2009, I just started uh, dating this guy. Um, and I also started at the time wearing quick weaves. Um, and if you're, I don't, I don't know if I need to explain what that is, but um, you know, you're basically gelling the hair and then gluing the tracks on top of gelled hair. Um, before I started getting quick weaves, um, I still am a religious hair person. I go to the hairdresser every week. I mean, I got to stand in an appointment with my hairdresser. Um, but back then, um, every week I was perming, I was coloring. I mean, every other week it was, these edges need to be laid down, throw that perm in this hair. The next week, my hair would be orange. The next week, my hair would be pink, okay? Then we gotta lay these edges down again with some perm. And then let's put the quick weave on, on top of that. So every week, something was happening to my hair. Um, the guy that I was dating at the time, it was his birthday, and um, I had just celebrated mine. I put this quick weave in, and it was time to get a new quick weave. Um, and she's at the shampoo bowl, and she's taking the quick weave out. And if you, if, when you're looking up at your stylist and you're having a regular conversation, when their face starts to change, you know that something is not right. And she's washing my hair in horror. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is gonna be okay. So this is something I see in a lot of my clients, and this affects black women most, this type of alopecia. It is a scarring alopecia. That means once your hair follicle is destroyed, then it is permanent, this type of alopecia. Now, at the same time, the thing is, a lot of times you have some scarring, but you also have some hair follicles that are dormant. Mm -hmm. So they're not completely they're not destroyed, they're just dormant. So as a trichologist, I do have cases where I am able to restore, not all of the hair, some of the hair, back to its normal form, but not all of the hair. So as a trichologist, we primarily, with trichologists, we don't just look here. We assess the whole person. So we're gonna ask you about, of course, how you're wearing your hair, what type of hairstyle, We'll ask that. We're going to ask you about medication. We're going to ask you about your cycle. We're going to ask you about what you eat. We're going to ask you, did you go on a diet? Is it a crash diet? Did you rule out protein? So we do family history. All of that affects your hair loss. This is interesting. Um, I've had clients come in who, my hair was so long when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Is that is that part of the reason why? Like you know, it, and then I cut it and it never grew back to the same length. Yeah. Well, in it, no, because yes, as you age, your body changes, mm -hmm. hormones change. As I was saying, hormones have a lot to do with hair growth. Okay. That's why it's important as a trichologist when what I do treat trichology. It is not just the hair; it is a lifestyle change. I mean, you have to change, you have to focus on your internal first. Everything has to do with nutrition, nutrition deficiencies, and hormones. So with I'm spending all this money, for, like, oh, mind you, they got money from me because I, I was 23 when it was thinning. Yeah. I'm 43. Yeah. So at 23, I'm graduating college with my son, my stomach, getting ready to have him. So yes, stress might pay the pocket mm -hmm. then and all of this good stuff. And it would grow back and then it'll fall off and then it'll grow back. And then he was like, well, so I done went through the laser and take that good follicles and try to put them in there. Like I done did all of that stuff in okay. so these years. Yeah, I done did it all. And gave away all this money to end up just last year when I sat in my beautician chair. I said, Don't make me know another week, just yeah. shave what's up there. I'm just going by. She said, You sure? I said, She said, Yeah, because you cuss people out. 
I'm fine. Yeah. And just turn your mirror around so I can't see and take it off. I just can't deal with the hair. I'm, I'm used to hair. I just had hair when I was young, had hair. So I'm used to hair. So then with wearing weaves and stuff, so it's kind of like I be, I, when I did the ball, I joined the ball, the movement online, and was all in the group, and they, everybody looked so beautiful. And I was like, yeah. And then after a while, I was like, I can't do that. I feel, I don't feel beautiful without hair. And everybody said, you don't look beautiful without hair. You don't do your makeup. And, and I'm like, we big earrings. And I'm like, everybody look beautiful with that, but I just can't do that. Easier said than done. It's easy said than done. Go. I'm going to keep reminding us of that because to me part of the bigger issue is how we talk into ourselves yeah. because we do have options you can go and get make some internal changes you can come and make some physical changes but the conversation that we're having with ourselves is to me one of the biggest issues and that's why I started wild and worthy hair you know what I'm saying because again you need to be affirming yourself and it does again it, and you can say you know what it's okay today i'm not having a great day with my hair because i'm going to have to love me judging me today mm -hmm. and that's the conversation that you know you and i had but to walk around even one week one day with just shame and to think that you are alone that's not the case